Welcome to this week's episode of the Punk Popcast, where we're going to be talking about songs from soundtracks. Welcome to this week's episode of the Punk Popcast. I am Brad, and as always, we're joined by our guy Jason. Welcome, Jason. Hey, hey, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. And real quick, I think I should give a shout out to one of our listeners because he always messages me uh, and tells me what he thinks. And that's Bobby Hoskins. I met him in the Flickr Stick uh, fan group. I've told you. Oh, about. nice. Right on. And I had, had screenshot you what he was telling me about the episodes and uh-huh. always has positive things to say. So I want to give him a shout out because he's really super loyal listener. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, we, we appreciate your listenership. Truly, we do. That's fantastic. Um, so today we're going to get into, we're going to talk about uh, pop punk songs from soundtracks, which um, if you had asked me to do this 10 years ago, I'd be like, there's like none, right? But now looking back, I'm like, man, that's actually pretty easy, especially for anything that came out between 2000 and 2006-ish. And we pretty much covered all the Blink-182 songs from soundtracks, so that took away a good chunk. Yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, I did. You're right. <laughs> yep. But then, like, and so as I started, like, thinking, I was like, it's, yeah, I had three off the top of my head, and they're actually from some of my favorite bands. So I'll get started with one. Jason, since you let off last week, I'm going to lead off this week. That's how And I'm going to start with one of my top ten, really, in reality, top ten. Or I should say, I always say I have a, my top five bands, but there's like 10 bands in there. This is one of them. And it is the used. This is Poetic Tragedy from uh, from the movie Grind. Uh, this was one of my first exposures to the used. And it's funny because the first used album I actually bought was In Love and Death. And I was really confused why this song wasn't on there <laughs> at the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I hadn't. Uh, I hadn't listened to their self-titled album all the way through, but uh, but this is this is a really good song. It starts off really mellow, right? But it has a really strong build as it gets into it. Um, first, I mean, one of the one of the big things with me is I really like Burt McCracken's voice, like love it. That's part of the reason why I like the use so much is that I like his singing voice, I like his screaming voice, all of it. It's fantastic. I love the standard issue used guitars the standard issue used guitar <laughs> riffs right <laughs> because you can definitely tell a song is the used based on the way their guitars sound and the riffs that they play am i wrong that's true that is true yeah so um i love every little bit of it and this is a song that i feel like fit in perfectly in this scene in grind i believe it's towards the end when they're all kind of defeated like they didn't get the the skater sponsorship that they're looking for and they're but they're still out there just doing their thing just for fun um it, and it doesn't really get into it so much but the name of the song itself poetic tragedy where you see all these guys grow so much through the course of their journey right that it's like it's a bummer that they didn't get it but at the same time it's like it was a great story and it's fun ride and it's it's a pretty fun movie it's not like out cold like you said but it's <laughs> it's a good movie Spoiler it's fun alert. to watch <laughs> um no i like grind uh i can't see clown noses without thinking about the movie so it's definitely like an impact on me <laughs> every time i see a clown i think i hate clowns man <laughs> <laughs> see i don't i have to be like the only person from our generation that does not hate clowns they don't bother oh, dude, me. i hate clowns I hate clowns. But I just I, think I of uh, every time I see one. <laughs> I think I mean Sweet Lou shows the clown nose to the guy's sister that he fell in love with after he skates. Yeah. That's what I think of. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely right, for sure. Um, but no, this is a great song. Um, obviously a great band, in my opinion. Um, I th- I think it's perfect for the part of the so- of the movie, and it's it's just outstanding. All right, I'll stop talking in circles. Go ahead, Jason. <laughs> You're fine. Uh, not a big fan of the movie, but I love the song. Let's go with Teenage Dirtbag by Weedus. I love this song. <laughs> I love this song, too. And I have to say, because because you know I'm a big pro wrestling fan and I've done things in the wrestling business. 
There's right. a wrestler named uh, Spider Nate Webb who has used this as his theme song for like 20 years. That's and a few on a few years ago at one of the WrestleMania weekend shows that like the independent wrestling promotions do. Weedus played him in. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so cool. And then it, they have a song now called Spider Nate Webb, too, which is hilarious. But That's awesome. I love that. This song's amazing. Uh, makes me think of being a teenage dirtbag guy, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so, fun, fun fact about this song for me is um, this is the very first song I ever downloaded on Kazaa. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I got because nice. I was like, "What do I want a teenage dirtbag, baby?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, it's it's a. I mean, this was a huge song too. Like you heard this song all the time on the radio. I don't think I even have it on a mix CD anywhere, and because I didn't have to. That if you wanted to hear it, you just turn on the radio. Yeah. At least I mean, at least where I live, that's the way it was. No, no, I mean it was a, it was a big deal. It was on freaking. Apparently, according to Jamie, because she likes that show, it was on Dawson's Creek, which I don't think there were any teenage dirtbags on that show, but I didn't watch it to really know. So, yeah, I didn't either. I don't know. But, but no, <laughs> the song was a really big deal and for a good reason. It's outstanding. It's a great song. I love it. I and love and it. I got to say, speaking from experience and where I went to high school, if a dude drove an IROC, he probably <laughs> was a jerk. I got to be honest. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I know about guys being a jerk, but I don't know about anybody driving that rock. And so the school I went to, like for some reason, everybody wanted new cars. <clears throat> like all the kids drove new cars. Like there was, let me give you a little, paint you a picture about the kind of kids I went to high school with. And don't get me wrong. I have friends, obviously, but there was this one girl her, for her 16th birthday. Uh, her dad was like, I'm thinking about buying you a BMW. Would you like a BMW for your first car? And she said, no, 16 year old girls don't drive BMWs. I want a Honda Civic. So she got a 2002, which was the year Honda Civic instead of a brand new BMW. <laughs> and to tell you about where I went to school in 2002, <laughs> I was driving a 1986 Ford Bronco too. <laughs> You're not far off what I was driving. That I could start without having the key in because the ignition switch would just turn over. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. That's excellent. I love it. Already. All right, I'm going to go into my next song. Was it all faded? Was the no. interior all faded? No, it was oh. in good shape. <laughs> oh, that's good. Because anytime I think of like an 80s Bronco with that red interior, I always think it's super faded. And I don't know why. But that makes that's sense. Just the image that pops in my head. Um, okay, I'm gonna go with uh, this is a band we talked about uh, in our last episode, Dashboard Confessional. This song is Vindicated from Spider Man 2. Great song, uh, it is a great song from an outstanding movie. I love superhero movies, and I, I got into them originally because of the first uh, Tobey Maguire Spider Man movie <clears throat> that I watched the Spider Man cartoon growing up, and when they were like. Here's a live action Spider-Man. I was all on board. And when Spider-Man 2 came out, um, I I went opening night to the drive-in to see it. I, I couldn't wait to see it. And uh, it was awesome. I listened to the soundtrack that entire summer uh, with with Vindicated by Dashboard Confessional because that was, you know, the big, the big song off of it. Um, and Yellow Card had a song on there, another random place to find a yellow card song that you can't find anywhere else um <laughs> I, i'm seriously gifting mm -hmm. gifts and curses you can't find that song anywhere unless you look on the spider-man 2 album <clears throat> um but it, it's it's a great i liked the uh i like the the full band version of dashboard right like i do like like acoustic stuff but the full band version of this song was outstanding to me it was really their well songs are balanced. more lush with the full band. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really well balanced, is what I liked about it. And it was a different, there's a little different sound. Um, and it fit perfectly with the movie, too. It so does, that's... it really does. And that chorus, my goodness, it's it's great. Um, mm -hmm. yes. and, and 
what's Sorry, great and how it fits Spider-Man, the character. Mm-hmm. I'm not even so much the movie, the character is I am flawed, but I'm cleaning up so well. Spidey, Peter Parker's a flawed dude. Yeah. And, and that's what I love about the Marvel heroes is that they're, even though they're superheroes, they're still human. They have flaws. They're not perfect. And and I think this song captures Peter Parker more than Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons that I like this song so much is because that's that's one of my favorite movies. Um, the spot all the Spider-Man like franchise, like the what, like the 50 of them now that they have, those are some of my favorite superhero movies. And I'm I say that like I wish there was because I saw I saw No Way Home and I was immediately like, so when's the next Spider-Man movie come out? <laughs> Because they're so good. I love them all. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and take a break. When we get back, uh, we have some more songs and also our consensus uh, soundtrack pick. The Non There Sports Podcast is the home of sports talk for everyone. Every other week, you can catch David and Jason as they talk about all things sports. From current events to classic moments and everything in between. You can find the Non There Sports Podcast on Anchor.fm, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, and more. Please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Nine Plus Us presents the Baseball Together Podcast with your hosts, Blackjack Brad and Kansas City Little Big Briggy Blue Eyes. Weekly episodes for the entire baseball family where we talk all baseball all the time. Available on all your favorite podcast apps and on YouTube. Come join our baseball family where we do baseball together. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Punk Popcast. We are talking about some of our favorite punk pop songs from soundtracks. Now we have a consensus pick this week we do. We did not have one last week as far as acoustic goes, which is fine because we're going to do volume three next season most likely and we'll get there. It's fine. It's fine. So... Our consensus pick, and dare I say the reason we even did this episode to begin with, right, <laughs> is because of this one song. It's an Eve 6 song, Anytime. For any of you who have seen the movie Out Cold, previously mentioned, that was a tease or foreshadowing, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is the song at the very beginning of the movie after Stumpy does his monologue talking about the movie. <laughs> Outstanding, by the way. <laughs> like Jason, I've seen that movie so many times. I could go through and recite literally the entire monologue and the rest <laughs> of the movie for you right here and even do a shot for shot recreation because I've seen that movie well over 50 times. In we fact, might have to do I a watched... bonus episode reviewing the movie. <laughs> we might, maybe we will because so I bought that movie in 2004, the, the fall of 2004 while I was at college. And over the years, I watched it so many times, I had to buy a new copy because the DVD was worn out. That's, that's a true story. There was, not a, there was not a scratch on the disc, but it didn't play. Like, it wouldn't play all the way through the movie. It would skip and, and all kinds Jesus. of stuff. Jesus. But, yeah, that's how many times I've seen it's the movie. Great movie. Cool. <laughs> it's fantastic. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. But this is one of the best songs I have ever heard, and it's freaking impossible to find. I bought it's the probably soundtrack. the best Eve Six song. I would agree with you, and that's coming from somebody who is actually a really big Eve Six fan. That this, yeah, I would say this is the best Eve Six song. That from the very beginning, when Max Collins' voice comes, like he comes in with the pre, like the intro, and then the guitars, the bass, everything hits. Every note is perfect. And if we could put it in this episode, we would. <laughs> oh, we would absolutely. <laughs> so we would. good. And and then I feel like the um, what what's the word I'm looking for the um, the beginning where it's going through talk, showing everything. Um, the, the montage. montage the montage. It was right there. It was right there. <laughs> the montage goes along perfectly with it too. That I had a friend before I actually watched this movie. I had a friend tell me he's like he's like every night. He's like, every Friday night, if we're going snowboarding Saturday morning, he's like, I watch out cold just to get me ready. That's great. And and then once I once I watched the movie, I was like, yeah, I get it. I get it. Because I started doing it, too. That like if I was if I knew I was going to go snowboarding the next day that I would watch the movie the night before, because it gets you ready for sure. That beginning, that opening montage with this song. 
And I think that he said, so I bought a snowboard from him and when I was in high school and he said that this song was the reason he had an Eve stick, Eve six sticker on his board. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Cause he's like, he's like, I like Eve six, but, uh, but they're a band that I associate with snowboarding because of any time. So Would you be surprised cool that David's the one who got me into the movie? I would not be surprised, not even a little bit. <laughs> He's my best friend, but um, oh, right, but also his personality fits with it. <laughs> it does. Um, but I mean, this song makes me think because when we discovered the movie, it was like 2005, so maybe just a couple months after you did, because it would have been springtime. Um, yeah, because I think the first time I watched it was the summer of 2004. Okay, so a few months, <laughs> um, half a year. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I associate it with me and him both being dumped by our respective girlfriends mm. and just hanging out a lot. And this song was a song we played in either my car or his car a lot. <laughs> just going on drives and just seeing where the day took us. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can get that. So this this movie and this song I associate with obviously with snowboarding, but also with being in my first semester of college because I bought it. Um, I bought the movie in the fall of 2004, my first full semester in college. And <clears throat> the first week I owned it, I watched the movie eight times. That's awesome. It's a great movie. <laughs> it's so it's so great. And I, I can't say enough good things about the song either. Like I said, I we bought the soundtrack just for this song because you can't find it anywhere. Which is very upsetting. Maybe we need, we need to petition to E6. E6 to get it. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on Apple, put it on Spotify, put it somewhere so we can have Please, it. Please, we need this we song. Need it. <laughs> so much. That said, the, the YouTube right. link will be in the description. <laughs> yes, it will be. You can count on that because if you haven't heard this song, you need to. You absolutely need to. And I'm not kidding when I say this episode was put together specifically for this song. It was because we've talked about this song a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have. All right. Um. Let's see. So you have two left. I have one. Go ahead with your next one, Jason. Okay. So I'm going with, I think, our first ska band on the show. It is. Yeah. I'm going to go with Beer by Real Big Fish. It was in the movie Basketball. And <laughs> I love the movie Basketball for so many reasons. It is a fantastic parody of modern day sports that was made in 98. <laughs> And so, so I've never seen the movie, but I love the song. Like I, so, I, I love me, some, I love me some real big fish, and this is a great song. So when the song plays in the movie, there, it's a jump to five years later in the beginning of the film, and it's in the middle of what is called the Denslow Cup. In it's basically their like World Series for basketball, and they're playing on top of like the dugout in between That's innings. So cool. It's really awesome. cool. The movies, because you're a big sports guy like me, you will appreciate the movie's humor because it's basic. It is a parody of sports, a professional yeah, sports, yeah. Um, and very self aware, right? <clears throat> yes, yeah. And you'll appreciate the cameos from like Dan Patrick and Bob Costas and Al Michaels, and you will absolutely crack up over how convoluted the playoff bracket is in the movie. I've seen that part. I do know the playoff <laughs> bracket is incredibly complicated. And I'm like, yeah, that seems about right. <laughs> With every tournament I've ever played in growing up, that seems about right. That's how it goes. Um, not child friendly today, though. <laughs> no, no. Well, it's, I mean, it's like, it's like when, any, when they go through the, the list of the teams on dodgeball. Like those team names, if you really pay attention to them, like, oh, yeah, no, the kids shouldn't be watching this movie. But no, I remember watching that clip and being like, yeah, that's like, I remember playing in tournaments. Like, if we win today, then we don't play until two days from now. But if we lose today, we play tomorrow morning. And then we also have to play tomorrow night. And if we win that game, then it's three days from there. But you have to win two to move on because the team from last week that we played, they're going to come and play us then. But they might, if they win, then it's done. It's like, it's a whole thing and it's incredibly complicated and they were spot on with it. <laughs> so back to the song. <laughs> Sorry, um, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm the one that started this. So it's on me. Um, <laughs> this might be one of the catchiest songs we've talked about on the podcast. 
because I will sing well, this song for days on end. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I think that you can say that about most real big fish songs. Um, my sister introduced me to sell out when I was like, I was like 10. And that's still a song that I reference every single day in my life and have since then. And I still listen to it because I like it. I'm not sick of it. I don't get why people hate real big fish, but I love them. <laughs> me neither. I had a real big fish mix CD in high school and, um, and it, I, I, that was another, I, I burned through that thing. It was it was awesome. It was great. And the thing that's funny about it is it was a it was real big fish for the first probably fifteen tracks, and the last eight were Goldfinger. And my friend gave that to me. He's like, "I know you like Goldfinger. Here's this." But I listened to more real big fish than I did Goldfinger on that album. And I think they're criminally under uh, underrated for their mm -hmm. genre. I think there's a lot yeah. of bands that get a lot of love, and justifiably so. But I think real big fish doesn't get enough love. Mm-hmm. I think when most people think about like this type of ska, they think of Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. Which I love. <laughs> yeah, and a massive one hit wonder, right? Massive hit. That album is fantastic, though. Is I don't think I've heard the whole thing, but I've heard they're fantastic live. I've heard they're really, really good live. Um, but Real Big Fish to me is the band that hits with ska, like the like the hardest for me. And you don't have to drink to love this song. song and identify with it, so. <laughs> exactly right. Exhibit that A. Used to be me. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Strong choice, Jason. Strong choice with beer by Real Big Fish. Uh, my last one is another one of my favorite bands, Mest. Uh, this is I Melt With You from Not Another Teen Movie. Um, not a movie I have actually seen more than a couple minutes of, to be honest with you. Oh. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't get around to watching it. Um, but this first off this album is full of excellent uh pop punk covers and this is this is one of them uh it it feels like messed it sounds like messed uh they did they did the song justice i feel like this version is actually better uh this is what i think of when i hear that when i think of this song this is the version i think of is the messed cover Mess did a tremendous cover. They did justice to the song. Some covers don't do justice. They did. Mm -hmm. And because I, I'm of the opinion that the original is a is a new wave masterpiece. Because I like new wave music. <clears throat> but these guys, they made it their own, but they still kept it very close to the original. And that's hard to do. Mm -hmm. They did, and and one of the things that they, that Mess does a really good job with with that is they nail the guitars. Yeah, Tony Lovato is really good about that. That um, anytime I hear this song, I actually go to the Photographs album because that's kind of it has kind of the same sound. It might be around the same time. I can't remember. I can't line up my timeline perfectly with it, but uh, but yeah, that that new wave sound they they crush it. They nail it. It's it's perfect with this because that's something that Mess can do. So I think it's awesome. I think it's a great song. This is this is another one of those first few songs I downloaded on Kazaa because I had messed and I was like, I don't have that on my mix. So I needed it. <laughs> so I got it. It's probably one of the first five I downloaded, I'll be honest with you. That's awesome you remember that. <laughs> I, I have to so um I'll be honest with you. I think it was Teenage Dirtbag, uh, this um I, I want to say Rollin' by Limp Biscuit was one of them. There you go. And then, uh, <laughs> his big hit at the time doesn't it hold was. up though. Uh, <laughs> and then um, SR seventy one right now I think is one of them, and and probably come out and play by by Offspring because I didn't have it anywhere else and I needed it because that's all one songs I, I had <laughs> since I, I was like nine. So anyway, all right, go ahead with your your third last one here, right? It is my last one, and it's from the same soundtrack. It is another band we have not talked about yet. Um, <clears throat> I'm going with "If You Leave" by Good Charlotte. A so the thing is, controversial band. <laughs> it is. They are a controversial band, and we'll get there. Um, real quick, though, I the one thing that's funny is that like I was like, oh, I don't know that song, and then I turned it on. I was like, I, I do know that song. <laughs> I absolutely know that song. <laughs> and uh, just like mest's cover i think they do justice to the original song i think it's just just enough good charlotte and just enough of the original that it, it works um mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> Although the song from them that I wanted to pick from the movie is not on the soundtrack. So in the movie, spoiler alert, you've, you've kind of had 20 years now. <laughs> um, Gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the prom queen is conjoined twins. Oh, I do remember that part. I know that much. And Good Charlotte is the, the prom band and they, they play, put your heads on my shoulder. <laughs> of course they do that's so funny <laughs> and that would have been my pick if it was on the soundtrack <laughs> that's so funny i love that <laughs> there you go, see that movie. let's end with that because that's outstanding that's i mean there's so many things about that that are great but let us know what you think about our picks let us know some of your favorite songs off of soundtracks that uh, pop punk songs off of soundtracks. Uh, reach out to us at Punk Popcast on Twitter. You can hit me at JoJo Corno. That, that's uh, J O J O C O R N R O W on, on the Twitter machine. And Jason, where are you on the Twitter machine? I'm at X Jason Dag X and I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Very good. Thank you for joining us, and we'll catch you next week.